In this video, I'm going to look deeply into who runs Extinction Rebellion and links with the telecommunications industry, as well as 5G. The material in this video has been well researched and I am simply sharing what is already in the public domain. Originating from individuals who have been involved in environmental activism for some years and are personally acquainted with people in Extinction Rebellion. With that said, the authors have felt for some time that the groups which make up the climate activism movement are being misdirected away from positive and effective environmental action and instead being pushed towards a narrow set of goals linked to commercial interests. In order to understand an organisation or entity, one must first come to an understanding of its founders. Dr. Gail Marie Bradbrook, along with Julian Roger Hallam, appear to be the two primary instigators of the Extinction Rebellion movement. Extinction Rebellion has scored significant publicity, not just on social media, but also on the BBC News and in The Guardian. The movement launched itself very publicly on November the 12th, 2018, with activists gluing themselves to the doors of the Department of Energy offices in London and spray-painting slogans on the windows. Then more recently in April 2019, shutting down areas of London, costing businesses millions of pounds. They are demanding that the UK government immediately declares a climate and ecological emergency, reduces to zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2025, and creates a citizens' assembly to oversee these changes. They have also encouraged people in other countries to take up their cause. The hope appears to be that the movement will catch on in a similar manner to how the Arab Spring or Colour Revolutions did, bringing nations to a standstill and thus forcing politicians' hands. Gail Bradbrook, who is the closest person to a leader in the movement, currently works for Citizens Online, which has charity status. Her ex-partner John Fisher founded Citizens Online and is currently the CEO. Fisher used to be in the RAF, was a former director at Swindon Council and is currently a government advisor. Gail has been working for him since 2003. Here is part of a speech given by Gail Bradbrook at a Joint Institute for Public Policy Research and Oxford Internet Institute conference entitled Whose Responsibility is Digital Inclusion? Let's come clean about citizens online and our staff. We describe ourselves as an independent national charity focusing on the use of information and communications technology by socially excluded communities. But it's all just a cover. In reality, what we actually are are secret agents. Secret agents with one purpose in life, to find out what government is really doing with a digital inclusion agenda. So here we have Gail stating that citizens online are only describing themselves as an independent national charity, but what they really are are secret agents. Next up is Gail's profile from the Citizens Online website. Since winter last year it was removed from the site, but fortunately we had it downloaded already. As you can see here, Gail works with EE, which is rolling out 5G this year in the UK. It is unclear precisely when, or more importantly how Gail transitioned to causes like climate change, but what we do know is that for the past two decades she has been a favoured activist of the British state at least when it comes to their digital inclusion and universal internet access agendas. These euphemisms today refer to the 5G Internet of Things rollout, aimed at making sure that absolutely everybody, without exception, gets plugged into the emerging smart grid, which incorporates both military hardware used for crowd control, surveillance and communication systems. The 5G network is primary to this apparatus, an essential component for the scientific management global society, as envisioned and now being assembled all around us by an international oligarchy of techno-industrial and financial elites, the very same people who stand behind the UN and are positioned to become its beneficiaries. Here's another excerpt from Gail Bradbrook's same speech, the same as a secret agent's quote, on the Institute for Public Policy Research website. So who done it? Who really is the government's digital inclusion unit? This investigator begs your indulgence for the arrogance that could be displayed here when I say that I believe citizens online have played that role, unofficially and certainly not paid for by government. Who has paid for it? Industry. Our Alliance for Digital Inclusion Partners have understood the importance of the strategic coordinating role alongside the delivery of projects on the ground, AOL, BT, Cisco, IBM, Intel, Microsoft and T-Mobile 
are all supporting this work. So a plea to the new government, see industry as partners and not as cash cows, and value the knowledge of citizens online and our other third sector colleagues. We had to work hard to get it. There you have it. She's admitted that she is funded by the telecommunications industry, the same industry that is rolling out 5G on our streets, as well as having the ear of government Many of the directors and trustees of Gale Citizens Online Charity just so happen to be people whose companies stand to make an absolute killing from this 5G rollout, which is covertly promoted by Extinction Rebellion due to its coming under the auspices of the United Nations Agenda 2030, the current rebranding of Agenda 21, which is most often referred to with deceptive simplicity as sustainable development. Indeed, the Smart Grid 5G infrastructure rollout and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are entirely inseparable. When you hear governments or NGOs use the phrase sustainable development, they do not simply mean development that is sustainable. They are in fact referring to a very specific series of policy documents, all of which were designed by the United Nations. Climate policies are one aspect of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Gail Bradbrook has also spent two years working at Business in the Community, a charity run by Prince Charles, which also promotes the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Then in its Digital Deep Dive report, it goes on to promote smart cities, as well as machine learning, AI and smart urban spaces. Here's for Hannah Yamin at the Extinction Rebellion office, who is one of their leading voices. She has spent 27 years in climate negotiations, and helped to midwife the 2015 climate agreement to curb greenhouse gas emissions. In her hands is the UN document, a compendium of solutions for achieving the sustainable development goals. On page 77 and 78 of this document, smart meters are promoted as a solution to five of the UN sustainable development goals. Of course, there is no mention of the cancer-causing radiation that smart meters emit, neither their tendency to catch fire or ability to spy on you. She's currently a trustee of Greenpeace UK and will soon take up an advisory role at the World Wildlife Fund, both of which are also promoting smart grids and smart meters. These are Extinction Rebellion's three demands. We have three demands that the government must tell the truth about how deadly our situation is. It must reverse all policies not in alignment with that position and must work alongside the media to communicate the urgency for change including what individuals and communities need to do. The government must enact legally binding policy measures to reduce carbon emissions in the UK to zero by 2025 and take further action to remove the excess of atmosphere. It must cooperate internationally so that the global economy runs on no more than half a planet's worth of resources. By necessity, these demands mean an initiative similar to those enacted at times of war. We do not, however, hand further power to our government. We demand a citizens' assembly to oversee the changes as we rise from the wreckage, creating a democracy fit for purpose. The first point is rather vague since it doesn't tell us how the government will work alongside the media and how much influence it will exert. The second point doesn't explain what legally binding policy measures to reduce carbon emissions will be enacted. Lastly, who gets to decide who is appointed to be a part of the Citizens' Assembly? And why are they not instead suggesting a constituent assembly, which is more democratic? One of the likely policies resulting from this, developed by the UN's technocratic global governance bureaucracy, it involves establishing worldwide CO2 taxation, which we're being told by the corporate industrial elite is necessary to save the planet. If they get their way, we could see technology which is being pitched as having a low carbon footprint being forced upon us, such as the radiation emitting LED streetlights, electric cars, and smart meters, which are all part of the 5G rollout. One user messaged Extinction Rebellion via Facebook, recently asking if they could help to stop 5G. And their response was this. Extinction Rebellion's opinion is that the ecological crisis is far more pressing than 5G. That is why Extinction Rebellion is about the ecological crisis. Extinction Rebellion is not about 5G. You may disagree, 
but that's the way it is. The evidence is plain to see that 5G is an ecological crisis, but the corporate sponsors behind Extinction Rebellion don't want a distraction from their goals. 5G also seems to have escaped the concerns of councils up and down the country who are forcing through their climate emergency action plans, which include the rollout of 5G infrastructure. After cutting down trees, in order to claim an area has increased CO2 levels. Infrastructure support services company Amy, invested in getting the Internet of Things up and running, which is vital for 5G, and is therefore happy to assist with the cutting down of trees, since trees are causing a problem by blocking 5G signals. Back to Gail Bradbrook. Much of Gail's career seems to have been spent sat in corporate conference centres with John Varney, Chief Technology Officer of the BBC, and any number of government and industry talking heads. Here's the guest list from a standard roundtable meeting, the kind which Gail has spent nearly two decades attending. The document begins on Monday the 7th, June 2004, the Institute for Public Policy Research Digital Society team hosted a private roundtable seminar to discuss forthcoming reforms to central government IT. Gail even had dinner at number 10 Downing Street to brainstorm on digital inclusion. Our so-called political activist Dr. Gail Bradbrook attends these high-level private sector meetings where she frequently rubs shoulders with telecommunications oligarchs such as Anthony Walker, international business moguls and highly politicized scientists and other experts who are invariably presented to us in the media as impartial and unbiased. According to his LinkedIn profile, Anthony Walker was responsible for providing public relations and communications consultancy to the European Commission on Environment, Information Society and Social Fund Policy Areas and was also responsible for supporting the Directorate General Environment's Local Agenda 21 Sustainable Development Initiative. As you can see, there's a fine line between Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 or Sustainable Development, as they like to call it and the techno-corporate oligarchy behind the 5G rollout. When Gale met him, Walker was CEO of the Broadband Stakeholder Group, and he remains Deputy CEO of Tech UK. Here's Walker promoting Greater Thunberg's school climate strike. Walker's Broadband Stakeholder Group recently published a report, tellingly entitled, Lowering Barriers to 5G Deployment, which makes recommendations to industry, central government and local authorities Seeing how the broadband stakeholder group is comprised of all the biggest telecommunications and mobile network providers, you can be sure that their recommendations are going to be enshrined in policy by the central government. The broadband stakeholder group report even suggests a dedicated task force to hunt down any non-complying local authorities and to make sure they're all keeping in line with the government's desire to be a 5G leader. In the course of its 65 pages, the report mentions neither the mounting scientific evidence pointing to serious health implications of microwave exposure for both humans and animals, and especially those used by the 5G infrastructure, nor the multiple surveillance and privacy concerns. They're getting away with pushing 5G and military-grade smart grid surveillance hardware by wrapping it up in platitudes about resilient cities and sustainable development, and claiming that we need these technologies for environmental monitoring. Everything from air quality control to climate prediction and modelling, what they fail to mention is that these applications are secondary to the mass surveillance and electronic warfare capabilities and that 5G uses the same hardware, just rebranded, as is currently deployed by coalition forces in the Middle East as crowd control weaponry. The Digital Inclusion Unit, comprised of Gale, John Fisher, her ex-partner, who started Gale Citizens Online Charity, and their industry-sponsored activists and academics, have previously suggested that they, as the Digital Inclusion Unit, be given powers to influence the funding streams of local authorities already strapped for cash and struggling to provide frontline services like housing and waste collection as punishment for non-compliance with the central government's digital inclusion agenda. An agenda largely written by NGOs and charities like Gales, who are funded by internet and mobile phone infrastructure providers. No doubt similar penalties await any local authority who dares to resist the rollout of military-grade surveillance hardware and crowd control weaponry into the residential areas of their constituents. Gail Bradbrook has spent the past 18 years on the payroll of charities, NGOs and political think tanks like the Institute for Public Policy Research, 
being funded by JP Morgan Chase, which happens to be the UN's bank. As far as we're concerned, there's nothing whatsoever spontaneous or grassroots about the climate mobilization that's currently being promoted all over the mass media, mirroring what happened with the color revolutions Idealistic youth are simply being herded into pre-approved movements to create the illusion of a popular mandate for what the ruling classes have already determined to be the best course of action for preserving their dominance and control. Carbon taxation, smart cities, the 5G Internet of Things surveillance grid, AI and new investment opportunities in what's being called the fourth industrial revolution. Renewable technologies, dependent on very limited rare earth minerals, and heavy polluting mining operations combined with health damaging microwave technologies. Acting through proxy organizations permits these forces to obscure the fact that government policies are being swayed by corporate entities that fund entire networks of charities and non-governmental organizations to interact with government on their behalf. NGOs and charities tend to be seen as more caring and less corrupt than their corporate sponsors and are presented as such in the media even when their staff and financials reveal them to be entirely monetarily dependent on the corporate entities and supranational bureaucracies that they covertly campaign on behalf of. It's also very interesting to note that Extinction Rebellion have raised over £300,000 in funds since the end of last July through grants, donations and crowdfunding. Much of the donations via the crowdfunder being anonymous. In comparison to Mark Steele's campaign, against 5G, where he has barely raised over £12,000 over the last couple of months. Finally, an interesting video I recommend watching which goes into who really is Greta Thunberg and her employment with a company called We Don't Have Time, whose app is being backed by over 400 major multinational companies. This app will be used to police companies, institutions and people by their ecological footprint, thus further helping to bring about the fourth industrial revolution. He explains how mass media, multinationals and NGOs are working together to manipulate popular sentiment using a campaign of fear around climate change, like Extinction Rebellion, to justify the release of trillions of pounds in British pension funds to spend on so-called green technology. I also recommend looking at Corey Morningstar's article on the wrong kind of green for more detailed information on Greater Thunberg and the background to the manipulation of the environmental movement, as well as Nowhere.News and UN Extinction on Facebook, where I have gathered a lot of the information on Extinction Rebellion for this video. Please, if you can, share with anybody you know who's a part of Extinction Rebellion, whether that's via email, whether it's via a Facebook message to all the members in the different Extinction Rebellion local groups throughout the country. We really need to get this message out. Thank you very much.